Uh, my name's John Wells, I'm the head teacher here at Cleveland School. And what I want to share with you tonight is just, as it says here, the Cleveland School story. Just a little bit about the school journey of leadership, what we've tried to do here at Cleveland, and how we've implemented that. Obviously, any school will have its own unique um, niche, if you like, and that's certainly one of the things here at Cleveland that we've tried to do. And I hope from the end of the talk, you'll have one or two things you might think, oh, that's quite interesting, or, you know, I'd like to have a look at that in more detail. If there's nothing, then I'm sorry that you selected this, actual, this particular talk. So, as we go through, I just want to tell you a little bit about how long I've been here and the journey. Um, this is the third school that I actually was head teacher of. I've been head of two other schools. I'm approaching Unlucky for some 13 years uh, as head. And the previous two schools were in, um, a bit like Vic's describing, much more challenging circumstances, uh, less than 10% 5A to C, that was without English and maths, uh, lots of deprivation. So it's fair to say that I learned my trade on a very steep learning curve, made lots of mistakes, I was trying to sort of do everything, if you like, for the students myself, and you soon learn that actually you cannot do that. You've got to start setting up structures and systems and really sort of delegate and facilitate the learning of everybody in the, in the institution. So when I came to Cleveland, many of you might know what the school was like. It was 2004, the school was in Ofsted category, serious weaknesses, about 350,000 deficit, uh, and many of the staff have been here for 25, 30 years, which is fine but actually not for a school that wants to move forward, because it was always, we do it this way, we've done it for 20 years, that kind of thing. So, in using my previous experience, the first thing I would suggest that anybody does when they're leading a department, a team, uh, a school, is to get the right people in the right places. Uh, and that's a bit of the menu description that Vic was talking about. So we did a major restructure of staff, all the deputies all the way down, everyone reapplied for their jobs. Um, we had far too many staff, so seven or eight had to uh, go to really refine that. So it's a really hard process. So as we go through the next few slides, I want to tell you about the journey from those first few moments to where the school is now. And we've got a long way still to go in what we want to achieve, but we've certainly moved forward. So those are the six areas that I've only got now sort of 20 minutes to cover with you. So again, we'll, we'll fly through. Please stop me if you sort of catch a bit and you think, I want to ask a question before I lose it. Let's stop, ask the question, and then we'll move on from there. So the first one, when you come in and you're making major changes, however big or small the team is, you've got to get everyone to own that ambition and vision. So the first thing we talk about is our school, our future, where the staff and the students want to end up and trying to actually get that meaningful thing for them. We use lots of phrases. Uh, Mark started with a few game show ones. We don't tend to use those. We use ones like destiny is choice, not chance, positive relationship, mutual respect. We found four or five things that really are the core of our values, and I just relentlessly repeat them. Uh, and Cleveland staff will tell you I'll do that in staff briefings. There's one coming up later. Let's do what we say we do. It's no good me telling Ofsted, visitors, guests, this is what we do at Cleveland. We walk around and we don't actually see that. Do what we say we do. It's about the tough decisions, but knowing where you're going to. It's easy to make a tough decision, some might say, but actually they haven't got a clue what they're, what they're doing next. So the first thing was to actually decide what that clear vision is and then take the tough decisions along the way. If you leave it too long, it's too late. And, and you know, I've learned that in the first couple of headships. You've got to take that action, but with a clear vision and clear values. So at Clevedon, the, the school was run for the benefit of the staff. I'll say that clearly, I've told the staff that. The school's run for the benefit of the staff. What's easier for us? You know, what things can we do? And the students are just sitting there sort of waiting to be told. That's what it was like. So that's our strap line. We put it on everything. Student focused achievement. You'll say to me, well, every school's like that. And I'll say, yeah, they will say that. It's about what you do. What you do daily and you can demonstrate daily. So that was changing the culture. And we started by saying, okay, these students are now going to start leading students and leading change. Not about litter bins, but leading real focused change. And that's something that you need to model and to repeat on a daily basis. So how was that done? Front foot leadership. Structures and ethos were key. So getting the right people in the right places, as I've said. And what we did here is I took out the whole line of heads of faculty and then created subject leader structures where they only had to concentrate on teaching and learning. So all of your stuff that you might have done in your careers in terms of finance and running the budgets and all that sort of thing, you, as subject leader here, did not have responsibility for, or accountability for those things. 
That was passed on to directors of learning in the senior team, and we really had to get down to teaching and learning. And I'm going to share some of the things that we did in a minute. But before we could do that, we needed to sort out what our values were. So value-led schooling and education is really key because people will ask you the questions, you know, why are we doing things? So we cleaved and eyes everything and we do the hybrid model. So nothing comes off the shelf, nothing is taken from anywhere else. It is always reshaped for the Clevedon model. Why did we do that? Because um, in Clevedon there are five primary schools. There's probably about 200, 210 year sixes every year, something like that. We were only getting about 150 of them. 60 were choosing Gordano, Backbone, Nelsey, somewhere else, Bristol Grammar, something like that. So they were saying the school's not good enough for us. So we didn't want to repeat a Backwell, Gordano and so on, because they were doing their own thing. We had to find something to hold on to that was Clevedon. Something different, something special about Clevedon, not only for the students, but to encourage staff to come here. So again, repeating the messages. We use this, and we've used it every year since, about any little change or implementation, whether it be for the staff or the students, never forget the why. Why are we doing this? What's the purpose? Um, learning outcomes, let's pick one of those. You might say a learning outcome, you know, to describe so da da da, and then leave it at that. A kid will say, you know, so what? And you say, so that, you can da 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 do the next thing. So it's all about the so that, why are we doing things? And that's in all the structures. You'll see here a little symbol beginning to come up, which is called non negotiables. About 18 months ago, January 11, we were offsted last in October 11. Um, what I didn't want to see was what was written in our previous reports as the recommendation that had been there in the report before that. That was about marking and planning. It's the stop phrases, the use of marking to inform progress and so on and so forth. There was no way I was going to see those in the next offset and we started to create non-negotiables. I'm going to share those with you in a second. The first ones were around values. You won't read the next slide, but it gives you a flavour of how we presented it to the staff. Basically, anything and everything that happens in this school about how children line up or take the register or what's expected of staff, you follow the lines, per professional standards here, engagement with the students, the ethos that you're creating. So we've had things like a staff dress code when we change the uniform for students, so staff are expected to dress in a certain way at all times. Um, if people come to interview and they're not dressed appropriately, they don't get past you know, phase one because it's all about the ethos and the modelling that we wanted at Clevedon to make that very special. So I've got sort of uh, larger versions, we can show that later. One of the major structural changes at Clevedon was to change after I'd done all the staff, so you can imagine that was about 70 staff with management allowances who either ended up without any or went into positions or left the school. We changed the pastoral structure. Heads of year, uh, all changed to a house system, um, and we put in vertical tutor groups, um, one of the first sort of schools around this area to do that. Um, the thing at Clevedon that changed the staff's sort of opinion was that people that were in the jobs didn't automatically get the next set of jobs, and it was about people being right for those jobs. After a year, the children said, I don't know which house we're in, because they just wore white polo shirts, same as every other school did around here. So I said, make a uniform then, it's got to be smart. And they designed it themselves. In the little tag it says, look smart, feel proud. And the house colours come through really strongly. So the school colours are black and gold. They turn into the stripes. They've got all coloured linings. You might have seen some of them downstairs. That switch to switch in the school completely on the 1st of September, the first time they started to wear the uniform and the first time the vertical groups went in. It was amazing the change in how the students responded to each other and the community feel that it gave. Now at Clevedon I want to talk about frameworks and please be clear the word frameworks not structures because it was about the learning once the ethos was right, how we got the learning right and changed the dynamics in the classrooms. So we talk about something called the Clevedon lesson, that's a picture of it. So we decided to have learning outcomes only because we were seeing objectives, targets, nothing, all sorts of different things. So we want to be very clear, so it's outcome focused delivery. And then we set up a slide that we just kept using, so it wasn't different each time, and we would just focus on a different box for CPD and make sure the staff knew what they were doing for each section. So how to write outcomes clearly, what should be happening with them, how you go in from the start of a lesson and move around the cycle, and we pick up the new learning task, the task development, 
the multi-plenary approach, and what you do at the end of the lesson. So that was really key. And the thing about a framework, if I go back, we started to introduce the idea of learning DNA. So this A, you would argue, might be the traditional sort of three or five part lesson. Starter, main, boom, that kind of thing. At Clevedon, you can do A, B, C or D using the Clevedon lesson. It doesn't matter what you order, how many plenaries you have. So that framework was giving consistency for the students, but not a structure, a rigid structure that actually was stopping learning and progress happening. In addition, we started to look at progress and we did multiple different ways of picking out each of the sections and sharing with staff the best methods to demonstrate progress, to let progress happen, and certainly in a minute I'll show you how they felt confident and comfortable if any visitor came in, particularly if they had the Ofsted badge on. So we went through different methods of that, and there's the Cleveland lesson again, and as you saw, we'd spend some time just picking on one of the boxes. The Clevedon lesson went in for a couple of years, really working hard on that, and this was put in about six months before, maybe a year before, the, that Ofsted inspection, which we knew we were building up for, because if we hadn't got any, anywhere with that, the school would have been in trouble. So what this does is demonstrate the top two boxes are about pre-learning, pre-the lesson, the middle two are about the delivery of the lesson, and the bottom one's about things that the schools were doing outside of lesson time. So, if I sort of use this little clicker thing here and here, a couple of things, marking there was a key recommendation. We've introduced something called TIM marking, triple impact marking, it's something all the staff do, the students